Based on their observations, the members of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, Science and Security Board find conditions in the world to be so threatening that they are moving the hands of the doomsday clock two minutes closer to midnight. It is now three minutes to midnight. Today, unchecked climate change and a nuclear arms race pose extraordinary and undeniable threats to the continued existence of humanity. To turn the doomsday clock back and to change the current course that is leading us towards a climate catastrophe, the world needs good leaders more than ever. It's a crisis of leadership in terms of taking action. That There has been 20 years of leadership on making the case for why action needs to be taken. And it's clear that phase is done. Right now, it's we need to start working together. We need to find the collective action that can help us all make progress so that we don't go over a cliff down the road. Good news is that even in the heartlands of coal, shale gas and nuclear energy production, there are visionary leaders. I do some presentations. You know, people ask me, Gail, come and tell us about what you're doing in Manaka. And kind of when I start out, one of my questions is, who believes in global warming? And then people put their hands up, and then I says, okay, well now I know who the Democrat and the Republicans are in the room. And it just kind of a, takes the ice off and lightens people up. This uh, comprises of all of North America and parts of South America. It's an organization of over 25,000 members. And it's uh, pretty humbling for the borough of Manaka to be the uh, 2013 recipient of this award. So this is downtown Manaka? Yes. How many people live in Manaka? A little over 5,700. It was just they threw all in one dumpster. Yep. He's very, he has a big heart, first of all, big heart, um, very generous, very giving. They, he's very energetic. He really researches, he reads, he studies. He just, when he does something, he just does it 120%. He gives everything to it. You know, being a business owner, I have that quality or trait of an entrepreneur, and I think. You know, when you're a manager, this is your company, and you have to look at ways to make it profitable and sustainable. We've done a broad spectrum of uh, energy saving initiatives uh, throughout all aspects of, uh, of the borough. All the, uh, the, the Christmas lights, we converted those all to LED lights. Uh, that was done back in 2008. Energy savings are a start. It's where there's the clearest business case. If you consume one unit of energy less, you actually save three additional ones, four total, is because of the inefficiencies in the generation and distribution of electricity. There's a savings of four, and that's that much less coal that needs to be burned or fossil fuels if your utility system is based on that. Oh, the electrical costs, it's, it's been a huge savings. So a small upfront investment pays off year after year after year. And it's remarkable to have a 25% savings and one and a half mil equivalent savings for taxpayers is wonderful. How often do you hear a municipal government saying, they're able to lower their costs. The first thing everybody needs to do is, is, you know, if you don't need the light on, turn it off and reduce your uh, usage. And that's the easiest thing to do. And that's kind of what, what I try to promote first and foremost. And then obviously 
going with an energy efficient light bulb is your next step. And, and then after that is how can I make the electrics, electricity that I'm using as environmentally friendly as possible. And that's, that's our next initiative with trying to generate our own electricity via solar and wind. Now we're coming up to our residential uh, solar panel. And we're hoping that this installation will encourage other residents to utilize the solar panels on their their rooftops or you know their their side their rear yards our ultimate goal is to have the boroughs electrical utility usage um, completely off the grid and this is primarily all the water for uh, downtown gravity feeds and serves the uh, residents in the lower portion of Manaka. We plan to put an aluminum cover over top of both uh, reservoirs and then it attached to the aluminum structure uh, solar panels. We are the only municipality in Beaver County that actually has residential property that abuts the river. Most of the other towns are the train tracks and heavy industrial is kind of taking the riverfront property up. Yeah, we'd like to put some windmills, and I'm actually thinking of putting some architectural windmills, more of the vertical as opposed to the traditional windmills, just having them blend in with the landscape a little bit better. He's willing to take those risks. He's willing to sometimes try to push the envelope to the point where, okay, maybe things need to back off a little bit for things to move forward. But if you don't push, then change may happen too slowly. And you also may leave more on the table, more opportunity, more cost savings, more chances to help your residents than if you don't push. Being a, a, a borough manager is more than um, just being a manager because managers typically just maintain the status quo where you need to be more of an individual of leadership and an innovator is more what the position entails because you've got to change and evolve and in order to, to be sustainable, uh, you have to do those things. If you just stay the status quo, you know, if, if you end up dying. I think that is very important in community and municipal leaders to, to have that entrepreneurial ship mentality as well. It's a uh, solar trash compactor. And there's uh, electronic eyes that once it gets to a certain level, the compactor will come down and uh, trash it, and it, and it holds five times the capacity of a regular trash can. So it reduces the amount of uh, pickups. Mario's work is clearly on the cutting edge where he's been able to tap into the most opportunity, and through his entrepreneurial efforts, he's been able to make a, a big difference. There are others that are on his heels and ready to jump in and also start tapping into those uh, opportunities as well too. So he's the, the front lines on a trend that's evolving in our region. Mario Leone had to change some of his plans before getting funding for them. about global warming and climate change. It can affect like a lot of the earth. That it's pretty terrible. Yeah. And it's, it's like melting the polar there, ice caps. Of, yeah. And it could like start the world over again. Yeah. It could be pretty bad. Um, what I know about sustainability is they're creating new energies that are going to stop global warming and keep it healthier for the earth. 
And uh, Rocco's dad is actually one of the pioneers who are bringing it to this, like to this region. So, what do you think about that? I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is when I make it famous, then you guys can say, "I know him." Yep. Yeah, he was my basketball coach. Yep. Huh? and my baseball coach. Yeah. Yeah, so why is he doing all that stuff? Probably to help the earth, so that other people can live a better future. Life. Well, initially when I got into it, it was primarily money uh, was the bottom line, and because of my government aspect, it was you know you had to answer to taxpayers, and it, was, it was saving taxpayers money. And, and as I translate it to personal, um, obviously it was uh, for money, but I make the decision also on on environmental impact as well because I have young children and I want to uh, ensure that the environment is is healthy for them and then my grandchildren uh, as well. I don't see my council really making a lot of their decisions on Democratic or Republican philosophy. Uh, local governments based more on the right and wrongs. There's not a Democrat or Republican way of paving a road or putting in water lines.